Kamaru up on the high ground. There we are. Nice claim off. Darcy is on the run. And he jumps. Good afternoon and welcome to the first match for this Pro Dota 2 playoffs. Yesterday we saw the non-pro version ending with MTW taking the win, taking home $5,000. And today we'll see the start of what will be an immense matchup for the entire world. All teams will be, part well, a lot of teams will be participating. Eight teams from uh, around the globe fighting for that number one prize, $10,000. And uh, this is like the first match. Like I said, it's going to be best out of three. It will determine which team will be in the winner's bracket and which will team will be in the loser's bracket. Loser's bracket will only have best out of one game. Winner's bracket games are all best out of three. And um, there's two games today. It's going to be IG versus bottom bottom as number one. Here we are. And at eight there is Quantic versus Mouse Sports. So uh, those are the two, ga two uh, games that we'll see tomorrow today. And tomorrow we'll see two other games. If you're curious to how these teams got here in the first place, go check out ProDota2.com where you'll find all your information that you want. Uh, in the meantime, <coughs> let's uh, discuss this game. Sorry for my voice, by the way. It's a bit worse than I thought. And uh, we have got a Brewmas Brood Mother, wow, Lishrak, and a Chen being banned out from IG. Bottom bottom banning out the Naga Siren as well as the Nature's Prophet. Lycan is still in the pool. Let's see if bottom bottom will ban that one out or if they're comfortable facing him. I am not entirely sure. And uh, we will we will see, of course. <coughs> Heroes that are also still in that we have seen picked up quite a bit lately. Is oh, almost wanted to say Lizrek, but I want to see CK. Uh, Chaos Knight. <coughs> Tinker, Low Druid. Even though that, I s uh, may maybe I say Tinker Lone Druid only because, uh, um, because of course I have been casting a lot of MTW matches uh, over the last few days, and uh, they do like their their Tinker and their Lone Druid. But uh, we'll see if it's actually uh, if these two teams will be using those as well. Uh, they're taking their time for this last bend. Are they comfortable le letting the Lycan go through? Apparently they are. Lycan going through and Darkseer as well. That's the one I wanted to say. And uh, so Lycan will actually be in the hands of bottom bottom if they want it. Uh, or maybe they were counting on IG picking up that Lycan so they could pick up the Darkseer and already had thought about the strategy around it, picking up the Darkseer and the Enigma. Because right now, uh, bottom bottom probably wants to pick up an Enigma, maybe as well as a Lycan, just to make sure that IG doesn't get that, that black hole together with the vacuum. But they, if they do that... Then they have got two heroes that are potentially jungle heroes, and you know you're, you're kind of being forced on putting one of them on the lane, and that's not really ideal. That might just screw over your strategy. So, <clears throat> very nice from IG to pick up their Darkseer here, and just uh, throwing bottom bottom of uh, of guard, I guess, if you say that like that. I guess you don't, but you know what, you know what I mean. So bottom bottom thinking it through. Are they gonna go for that lichen? Enigma, or are they gonna let Enigma go through to the Darkseer? We will find out. Because if if they have the Enigma, they could also pick up the Sand King, and then you already have such a massive team fight. They're actually gonna pick up the Invoker, steal the Lycan. It will mean that Enigma is still in the pool to pick up for IG. <coughs> Not only to make a good combination with the Darkseer, but also it is a hero that can farm almost as fast as the Lycan in the jungle. Unless they want to pick up an Enchantress and have that one instead. I just gotta take a sip of water. Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> there we go. <coughs> I hope I should be f better this way. Um, Enigma indeed picked up. Shadow Shaman being the one to pick it up with that. And um, I have not cast that much, much uh, China matches, but the times that I have done that, it has been a Shadow Shaman support. So we'll see if that is going to be the case here as well. <coughs> wow. I hope that this doesn't uh, continue like this. <coughs> oh well. 
So let's see what pot and bottom goes for next. I mean, they have got the like and they've got a jungle, they've got a solo lane. Will they pick up another solo lane just to have those and to go for a strong dual lane next? Or will they already pick up their carry for their dual lane just to without risk of having it uh, banned out? For example, you could pick up a CK here now and still have a solo lane to pick up as well as a support. And there's a lot of options for the supports together with, with the CK. So that at least makes sure that you have to CK, otherwise it might get, might get banned out by IG. Maybe. And I do think, or maybe they're gonna pick up a support. If they're expecting Shadow Shaman to be played as a support, uh, yeah, they're gonna pick up a support as well, just purely because then they can at least make sure that IG doesn't ban out the supports that they would have wanted. So picking up the Venomancer as their support uh, will be. <coughs> will be uh, done for them. Let's see what the banner is gonna be. I do expect IG is gonna ban out some solo lanes. I mean they have first picks so they can say let the solo lane be in that they wanna have and ban out the rest. So like Windrunner, Queen of Pain, Puck all still in the pool. Bounty Hunter being played as a solo lane as well. Sometimes. But just uh, just banning those out would give them you know the the security of, of them picking up their own solo lane because I don't think Pot and Bottom will try to ban out a solo lane just out of fear that there is gonna, not going to be anything left for them, not anything decent anyway. That's uh, that's the downside of having second pick. Uh, we will find out though for Pot and Bottom what they could ban out. Um, well, it seems like IG they need a solo lane but they also need, if they're going to have a Nickman Jungle uh, with that, uh, but they also need to have a, a sort of carry with a dual lane. So a CK ban out from bottom bottom would not be bad at all. Um, if you're gonna have Shadow Shaman as a support, I'm I'm, I'm I still am, am assuming that it's gonna be Shadow Shaman as a support. But you know it could it, it is not uh, necessarily so. He could be solo mid. Yeah. But yeah, a ban out or for the CK, maybe for the Dragonite, maybe for even the what's his face OD. Would be potential banners that could could work out for them. Just just to deny those those mid game strong heroes. Maybe even a Templar assassin. I don't think that one will be picked up. But you know those kind of heroes. It's gonna be a brewmaster. Also one of the heroes that I just said. I mean, it's a mid game hero. You can compare him to uh, to the CK. Um, not really because of his abilities, but more because of the thing that he stands for. As in, around level seven eight, he will be strong enough to take on team fights and for CK okay it will take like two levels longer or something but still a strong mid game hero and uh, let's see if CK is gonna make it through or if bottom bottom is gonna bat him out right now we already have the shadow demon being banned out here so uh, they are expecting maybe a semi tri lane uh, coming off from that one uh, well, it still leaves queen of pain and puck still in the pool so solo lanes are at least sorted for both teams if they still want to pick up one of those and uh, bottom bottom thinking about their last ban out for uh, for IG Let's see what it's gonna be. Taking their time. Yeah, yeah, my voice seems to go better now. Thank you. And oh, hey, um, there goes the morphling. So no, uh, no carry for uh, no hard carry. Oh, Tinker. Well, I did say Tinker at the start. I didn't really know the the. Well, if IG wouldn't was gonna pick it up, but it's a strong solo lane. I mean. There's no denying a strong mid lane even, because that's the lane that they still needed, with a dark seer on the side solo sort of lane. <coughs> and uh yeah. Nice pick up there, and that's something that Pot and Bottom will have to counter. They have to get some more anti push now. Or have to have something that they can maybe push towers down with as well. I mean they have the Venomancer with the Venomancer Wars, that is nice. But it's not gonna be the same as the Tinker. Do -do 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 -do. And um, just so you're aware, there is a. If you want to watch another English caster on Twitch TV, which uh, gets my support, go watch Draskal. He's uh, casting on Leo Dota. So he is uh, casting on Twitch as well. You could show him some support. There we go. Lone Druid still picked up by IG. Okay, so the heroes that I said at the start uh, that I said were favorite heroes for uh, MTW get picked up here by uh, IG. And. I think we're gonna see a lone druid uh, shadow shaman lane or a shadow shaman tinker lane either way, but that is that is two heroes. I mean, we've seen why they are strong heroes. We've seen them banned out a lot versus MTW because the strategy that you can do with them is just very very painful, very difficult to counter as well. I mean, there is anti push in there, and push itself. I mean, anti push with uh, there's the puck by the way. Yep. Um, 
anti push with a with a tinker, which you can't really push through. I mean, you can't really walk in with the marching machines going through there. And there's pushing alone through it with just sending your bear up the hill to the tier three tower of the opponent, and you don't put yourself or anybody else at risk apart from the bear. And uh, that is just something that is just very strong. And if you that, if you combine that with a lot of team fight from IG, I mean the vacuum black hole, that is going to be very deadly for uh, bottom bottom. If they let themselves get cut out, because of course that is going to be the question, are they going to be uh, able to stop that uh, that combination, that combo wombo from going through? Wombo combo. I don't know which one of the two it is. Uh, let's see um, for bottom bottom who is playing what. They have got a playing the Sand King, and this is actually uh, way too sexy. Uh, they've got Tide to Time playing the Venomancer. Snaking is gonna be playing the Puck. We're gonna have closing the line is gonna be Aoi 2000 gonna be playing the Lycanthrope. He's gonna go into the jungle, and we have Invoker on the mid lane played by Fogged. And I have been told that Fogged, Fogged's Invoker is a famous Invoker, and I do believe we've seen him play it last Monday. And he indeed makes uh, quite a mean invoker. So we'll uh, we'll see how that uh, lane up is gonna go. Uh, with uh, Puck rotating to the bottom lane to have that solo lane up there with a dual lane with the Sand King and the Venomancer, which I think is gonna be way too sexy farming up that lane. For IG, they're already gonna scout out the jungle. I mean, this is something that they probably wanna have to do. They have to counter that uh, that lichen. They're gonna block out the creep sp the response. They gotta make sure that there's no spawns here. I think. We have got Faith up on the Enigma. We have got Xuan playing the Shadow Shaman. And all standing uh, very aggressively in the dire jungle. We have got on the top lane, we got uh, YYF playing the Darkseer. And uh, on the bottom lane, it's going to be Lone Druid playing the, uh, played by uh, played by Zawi. And that will close the line with Ferrari 430 playing the Tinker. And I mean, they picked up the Darkseer first. And I almost forgot that Ferrari's 430 Invoker is. Uh, I I mean he is a pretty famous invoker at that. I think he only has one loss with that so far, and um, yeah. So picking up uh, that invoker as the first pickup for uh, for bottom bottom was maybe he was also a bit forced out from IG by picking up the dark suit first. The barrel is gonna be uh, pulling the creep back. I I do like this. I mean we have seen this being done countless of times, of course. But what is in this uh, the fun thing about this lane that. Actually, Lone Druid is on this bottom lane. Lone Druid is going to get the farm here, but he's actually using the bear for the Darks here, so the Darks here can get that solid farm there. So I do like this lineup. So we have the Shadow Shaman, he's supporting the Lone Druid on this bottom lane. Puck should be able to get some experience here still, maybe even some last hits. I mean, he'll get harassed a bit by the Shadow Shaman as well as by the Lone Druid. Whoa, I have a slightly a bit of lag. Uh, this is US West, by the way, so this is probably one of the most laggy servers from US. They can take some harassment here. He should be fine, though. Should be fine. There we go. And uh, we've got the Tinker in the middle versus the Invoker. He should be fi Both should be fine, to be fair. Both should be able to get some last hits. We do have Invoker going for that Quas build, so not that strong last hitting Exort build. Uh, that we sometimes see to secure those last hit, but with Quas, still able to do that. And, of course, if you're going to be versus a Tinker that's going to be throwing rockets at you, it is a great one to have, just because you get some more uh, some more HP regen. Darkseer on the top lane, he actually left uh, the bear, as in the bear is going back towards the bottom lane. Um, he should be okay. I mean, he got level 2 by the creep wave that he got from the bear, and now he has Iron Shell and Surge, so he will be a lot more safe than he was before. And uh, we'll be able to harass Lycanthrope a bit more because Lycan is actually on this top lane uh, together with the Sand King Venomancer rotating towards the middle lane, placed up a ward there, and it's gonna rotate back. No aggressive uh, gank from them just yet. So we have a trident on this top lane. It does mean that IG has gotten the advantage in the jungle. I mean, <laughs> Lycan is actually forced to go into the into uh, into the lane. I mean, look at this ward. There's a ward there. There's a ward there. And there's a word there. No creeps for the lichen. I really, I really like that uh, place. Snaking is gonna pick up an invisibility rune. Invisibility. Let's see what he's gonna do with that. Probably, probably just, uh, just getting some more free experience there. I mean, maybe a free last hit with that, or maybe scouting out to see who's, uh, who's where, who's pulling. Looks like Chuan is uh, not stacking just yet. Probably waiting for that 53 minute, uh, 53 second mark rather. Maybe to stack and uh, deny some experience to snaking, but snaking is actually with this invisibility rune, he will be able to uh, to get some free experience. And there is no ward up on the bottom lane. I mean, they use uh, IG used up all their wards in the, in the radiant jungle, 
Uh, sorry, Dire Jungle. So they didn't see Proc picking up that uh, that uh, rune, even though he showed himself now again. So they don't have vision there. Only vision on this uh, top rune spawn. The same thing goes for uh, same thing goes for Pot and Bottom, by the way. I mean, ooh, hello, smoke up. Uh, but Pot and Bottom has got vision on the top lane, but not on the bottom lane uh, rune spot. And we're gonna have a dual gank. There is gonna be a burst strike, maybe with a gale. Uh, I'm not sure which uh, one is going to be first. Tinker is playing it fairly safe though. March of the Machines will help him a bit out. I mean, he will know by now that maybe there's a mist being called from the top lane. From the darks here. Or at least, uh, yo, there they come though. It will be wait in time. Gale, cold snap will hit. Gale will still hit as well. He's going to try to go into the jungle. Burst strike will go off as well. Tower in the meantime hitting us. That way too sexy. Laser will hit and it's going to be tight at time. It actually has to get away from here very fast. Tight at time still goes down. Double kill as Enigma managed to pick up the Venomancer as well as the Sand King. Invoker got the first blood though up on the Tinker. So he gets that one. But nice. I Faith coming out of the jungle. Taking those two kills and making sure that at least the first blood wasn't given in vain. Two kills on the back of him and he will go back to heal up maybe to uh, well actually he doesn't really need to heal up well maybe yeah maybe he needs to heal up. Do you think he needs to? Just to uh, just to get uh, back into the jungle uh, with full HP and uh, with some extra mana as well. And picking up those two kills, he's definitely not going to be uh, unhappy about that one but having to go back to base for, for that for that double kill. Uh, Lone Root with his bear farming pretty safely. I'm just gonna pop up this one because I didn't do that just yet. Oh, another gank. There they go. Tornado already going off. Burst strike as well. Gillet as well. Cold snap. And this time Ferrari doesn't have the support from the Enigma and he goes down without anybody else going down with that. Another kill for the Invoker. That is two kills up on Fog right now as he definitely takes the advantage up in this middle lane. Now you have three heroes uh, on this bottom lane now too for, uh, for IG. We have Schwann who already showed himself with this double damage rune. And uh, Enigma coming here now as well, and they actually might be looking to push the tower a bit. Tuan is level three. Uh, Bear will be able to. Be oh, Bear level uh, uh, level seven. Wow, well, sorry. <laughs> it's gonna be Zala level five though. Bear's gonna harass, snaking away. Well, they can uh, can push, uh, put some pressure up on the lanes. Here comes the creep wave. Will be slowed down a bit by the bear, by this ether shock as well, and that should be maybe it should be a full tower in time with those idols also hitting so much. But uh, Illusionary Orb uh, is going to try to do as much as he can. It will still go take, get taken down. Faith taking up a tower money. He is having a great time with uh, gold wise at least. I mean, that's going to put IG very much in favor of the gold graph. Yeah, not only because of the double kill, but al also because, of course, Faith, oh, Shackle, Malefice, Puck in some trouble. Here comes Lone Druid as well. Ether Shock and Lone Druid's last hits. Finish it off. Burl Strike in the meantime from the Sand King, but he has to be back, get back here too. And here comes the Venomancer as well. Will they be able to get Swan? I think they will. Tower will be distracted by the creeps. Here comes the Fox as well. Gonna come in there. Swan still taking a lot of harassment here. TPs are gonna come in. There goes Swan. Goes down to tie to time. It's gonna be Zao. It's gonna be on the chase. Here comes Puck as well. Losing your rope. Cold snap. And uh, Zowie is gonna go down. Invoker killing spree. Takes the pick. Takes the kill. 3 for 0 up on, the, up on that Invoker right now. And that is... Uh, well, great going for them. As uh, so far, I mean, it has been a Venomancer that has died once. It has been a Sand King as well as we just see Puck uh, picked up once. And those are heroes that you know, it's it's nice to get kills upon them, but it's not as important as kills uh, upon that uh, Tinker or upon that uh, that Lone Druid. They are the ones that are farming way more. Puck's job is basically hold back the lane as long as possible and make sure maybe that uh, the Lone Druid isn't getting as much farm as uh, as he would like. But him dying, I mean, it's it's sad, yeah, but, you know, it's it's not that big of an issue. And Lone Druid is actually the one that's being trying to get the farm there, so taking him down is a bit more important. We have Aoi, though, still uh, solidly farming on this top lane. He is 37 for 6, as you can compare him to the Lone Druid last hit wise. Of course, Lone Druid is 34 for 13, so he's doing quite decently as well. <coughs> but, uh, Lone, yeah, he's not being shut down. He's not being killed just yet. He is building towards his uh, Vladimir's offering to go for some uh, early Roshan if he can get the chance. IG is probably uh, gonna know uh, about when he is ready to do that so they're gonna try to stop that from happening but uh, for now it's, uh, he's not yet uh, ready for it so we'll still continue to see him uh, farm on that top lane with help of his friends because there is a Venomancer here as well as Sand King still being there as well getting some levels up on there. Three heroes from IG in this middle lane for now they might be trying to go up Fogged. Uh, they will have to well, if they do that though, they will have to go in from uh, just from the front and Fog might be able to see that and he has backed into that wax, so he is extra super fast if he uh, chooses to run away, which he probably should if there's going to be three heroes uh, chasing him down. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, if if the well, everything actually. Wow, he's not going to be able to uh, run away at all. There's a shackle. There's anonymous black hole being used. An invoker goes down. Tinker taking the last hit. Important kill for them. Tinker taking some control back over the lane, and it looks like IG is ready to just continue pushing. They have the tier one tower bottom. Fortification gets forced out on this tier tower mid, and uh, Hastrun up on a Tinker. Where is he gonna go? There's a uh, plings up on him. They know that he's going somewhere. He's gonna pick up an invisibility rune. So having that one, and there is no wards up anymore uh, by any team apart from IG's ward uh, right up here to uh, scout out the uh, other side of the river and maybe uh, maybe catch out some gangs that are incoming up on them. But uh, yeah, that is uh, it is blind time. It is ganking time for uh, for the teams. Maybe well, we are just saw a gank at least uh, from the Tinker, and who has been stacking this camp as well, making sure that he can uh, farm those, and he's gonna continue stacking those. So as soon as his march of the machines, well, as soon as he has the stacks for it, whoa, whoa, kill on the b top lane. It's gonna be Invoker taking down a dark seer. So Invoker uh, back towards his killing spree, well, his first one towards his killing spree, with the uh, Lycan helping out, turning into a wolf form for that, he did pick up his Vladimir Suffering. So we might either see him going for uh, for Roshan right now, or picking up his uh, Medallion of Courage, which he can do now too, there we go, he picks it up. So we will see him go for Roshan fairly soon, I do think that IG will know what's happening. Uh, but we don't see any wards being placed just yet, bottom bottom actually uh, counter warding the ward there, as they realized somehow that the ward was there, or somewhere around this river, they... Uh, placed up their own ward and the sentry ward just in, just in case there was anything around there and there was they knew something should be there let me see a ward there too so uh, b picking up that one we have got wards from IG back up again though there's one on the top lane and another one at the top rune spot so everybody back towards uh, their ward so far we have three people of IG on this bottom lane once again with Shadow Shaman here as well Shadow Shaman is still level 5 no wards coming up from him yet and they smoked up looking to maybe go for uh, for the tier 1 tower middle just again it's only going to be tied to time that's there and tied to time level 4 he is uh, not going to be very happy if there's going to be a gank up on him even though can I call it a gank up when every com everybody comes running from the front Surge up on Enigma. He's not going to go for it though. T uh, tight to time already backing off. Knowing that he would be uh, too, uh, it would be too dangerous. Fork might be in some trouble though. He's a tight and I, I like this. He's trying to take the away the farm from the Tinker. He's going to be in some trouble right now. T taking some harassment from the Ancients. And here comes Ferrari. Invisibility run up on him. In the meantime, tight to time. We'll probably go down here as well. Fog landing a rocket. Oh, there he goes. Sorry, Fox is not landing a rocket for Fox landed the tornado and Tinker picking up the Venomancer with a hit. He did not choose to go for Fox. I do think that he could have, maybe potentially, even though his rockets aren't that high level yet. So rather going for an unsure kill, going for a secure kill, and that is probably the best, uh, the best thing to do. Uh, right now they know that the pressure is on this middle lane, so it's going to be Pollen Bottom that is coming in to defend. Actually, there's going to be four heroes soon here from Pollen Bottom. We also have Lycan fairly close, who is just waiting for his chance to go for Roshan. Uh, we don't see him picking up a smoke just yet, which I would expect him to pick up if he wants to go for that Roshan kill. Unless he just uh, is going to go uh, in blind, because they don't have any wards there. He's going to go in blind. Pollen Bottom is going to try to force out a teamfight there. They have got the Sand King with the epicenter ready. They've got a Venomance already, the, it's not level 6 yet, but who cares, the bear is there to scout it out, though Gil doesn't hit on the bear. It's a bit of a shame, Burst Strike does it, they want to kill off this bear really bad. He's taking a lot of damage as well, and they think the bear should be fine, unless Puck will be able to uh, go there still, nope, bear will be fine. And Schwann, level 6, there goes the wards, and there goes the tower as well, bam, dead. And that is the advantage from the dire side that you normally have as a dire side, almost as good as gone. There's just going to be two more towers left to be taken down by IG. I mean, this tower is still very much in favor. We did see them t trying to take down that tower. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the, the, the dire advantage for Roshan is that you can get there very fast with TPs, of course, it's on your side. But if you, uh, if you don't have your towers, then you know that advantage is as good as gone. It's just uh, going to be IG taking some control over the map that, uh, that they want to have. <coughs> and they're just pushing down towers in the meantime. I mean, it's going to be the tier 1 tower on the top lane. It's going to be the next target. Faith is already here. We also have Tron here as well. And uh, they just uh, want to do that. And Ferrari here as well. And just uh, Fog trying to stop this from happening. He's going to get some support from Way Too Sexy though. He's on the Sand King on his way here. But I don't think they can stop too much from going on here. Even though we do have a teleport towards the bottom lane where a black hole is going to go on. There's three people in that black hole. But there's no damage to go through. A like and killing of the Enigma right as the black hole ends. And they are on the run. The TP's incoming. They saw them. So they back out from that one. Vacuum there. 
It's gonna be uh, why we have still gonna try to do something. Self gets popped off, at least that's something too. The chase is still on for the puck puck will be able to TP uh, to there though, he should be fine, there we go. And that was it <laughs> it was a perfect black hole, but you know, nobody there to uh to go through with it. That's a bit of a shame. <coughs> Invoker 12 for uh, 1200 gold up on him right now. He's building towards the four staff, I would believe, to get some more mo mobility up on him. And if SFP is not mobile enough, I mean, he's going for Wex uh, Max, so uh, having that extra speed up on him, very nice. Tower got some harassment on Rockets, so make sure that both uh, Wages Sexy and Fogged are going to be backing out from that one. Uh, YYF is building towards the mechanism by the looks of it. Has got a soul ring already. I haven't checked out that many of the items yet. That is a bit. Uh, <coughs> that is a bit uh, of a shame, sorry. Um, Lone Druid, he has been farming a lot. There is a hand of Midas even up on the Spirit Bear. He's got 2300 gold and he will be going for that Radiance uh, when he has enough gold to pick that one up. <coughs> We've got the Darks here. Well, we already, we already saw that he was going to go for a, a mechanism. Venomous has been playing support. I mean, he's uh, doing a good job warding, counter warding a lot as well. I've, although this uh, ward is not counter warding that ward, which is a bit of a shame. But still, the, uh, the thought is there, which is nice for him. You know. Gotta appreciate the, that Sand King. Sand King has not been getting that much farm. He has been uh, having to. Uh, well, he's been on a trial with the uh, with the Lycan from the start. So he's uh, he's been uh, pl forced in a bit of a supporting role. He's got 1k gold. He's got his mana boots right now, so that is nice for him. Uh, but that is about it. Uh, let's see if we can find some more items. We should be checking out Lycan. Well, we already knew Lycan. We already knew Lycan. That should not come as a surprise. We should check out Tinker though. Boots of travel. There we go, completed. So let the pressure begin. Let the global map control begin. And even though there has been no towers down yet for IG, right now it will be even harder to pressure them down for uh, for bottom bottom. But then again, bottom bottom is not too worried just yet. They have their late game security. They have their late game insurance. Uh, Lycan is still happily farming. He's not died yet once, and he has got a kill up his up his sleeve and has taken that Roshan. He is doing just fine. He is doing just fine. And uh, we will see probably IG trying to force uh, the tier 1 tower on the top lane down for uh, for Potomol. They have got the Shadow Shaman wards again, even though there's three heroes right there on the top lane, so maybe they'll try to uh, stop it from happening. Even though, because of DPM from the Vatterman, so they really think that this tier 1 tower is going to be the next one target. Next target for IG. Yes, Sentry ward. Ah, nice. I have to say, well, it's, it's at, the, at the end of his uh, duration, but you know, it's still nice. To, uh, to see all those counterwords. They know when they're spotted out. They have got the awareness on the map that as soon as uh, as they realize, hey, that movement of IG right there, that would have ha wouldn't have happened if he didn't know I was here. Uh, and just being very sharp on that and counterwording everything. I mean, there's one word up for the dire team, for the radiant team right now. I have to say no words up for the dire team at this time, but still. Um, that is just, uh, it's, it's great awareness, to be fair. It is. Invoker Invisibility rune up on him and actually pops it off uh, straight away. Oh, he doesn't have a bottle, of course. And he wants to go for, uh, for Ferrari, but you know, March of the Machines will make sure that he's not wanting to go for that one. As uh, the Ancients just got cleared out. And Stinker taking some, just some solid extra farm for that. I mean, he can just continue on doing that. Oh, there were still two, two left. Oh, no. is, oh, is he gonna start to last it? It's 200 gold or something like that. Tornado. Yep. 200 gold. Up for Fogged. 195 to be exact. In the meantime, on the top lane, we've got a Dream Call. Zhao in some trouble. Burst Strike hits two. Epicenter being channeled. Zhao in trouble. Schwan is going to be able to get uh, not get away. Well, I maybe, maybe. Malefice, he will be able to get away. There we go. Malefice will make sure. I'm a black hole. Being casted in the middle of that. Here comes Ferrari. TPing in. Gets a kill on the Sand King. Lycan in some trouble. Gets killed off as well. Double kill for Ferrari. Well, ages. Sorry. In, in fact, a double kill. They're actually going to let him go right now. So that's a, that's a good thing for an agent. Here comes Fog helping out. Cold Snap going up. There is Malefiz again. Fog taking a lot of damage from that March of the Machines. And there comes the Shadow Shaman Wards where he has to pass, but he should be fine. Four heroes from IG on this bottle lane to help out. And it was the Lone Druid was the only one to go down, but Schwan actually staying alive. Impressive there. And a good, <laughs> good Malefiz from Faith, making sure that nobody was able to chase that. Not even the Lycan. Sand King going down there. That is, uh, and, and the Aegis. Important, important kills for IG. Pollen bottom. At least they got the Lone Druid. Definitely not a bad trade because, I mean, Lone Druid, look at his farm. He's got the highest gold per minute right now. With uh, just liking an Invoker Plus and that. But, you know, there's three heroes of Pollen bottom that are fairly low. 
and uh, it's only Shadow Shaman that is uh, in that in that bottom four. The, well, we have to just take into account, of course, that there are two towers down on the side of bottom bottom, and that will count towards the gold uh, per minute earned. Fog taking some damage from the vacuum from the iron shell which he got pulled into, but it's just. Uh, not distracted, is going to continue on his path, going to continue taking the farm. Just like uh, Zhao is, he is, uh, got the, he's got 3,700 gold right now, could buy his relic already. If he wants it in the meantime, pressure on the bottom lane, but here comes the TP. Tinker here, march to the machines here, no pressure from bottom bottom just yet. They can't apply it, not with that Tinker there. And they don't have four spirits from the Invoker as well to get that extra pushing power for them. Which is a bit of a shame, but you know. Just uh, as it goes, they have to just wait until until uh, Lycan is big enough to take some kills and take towers as a reward. Like they can have trade-offs and stuff like that, but they have to be able to every time they kill stuff, they have to be able to take something back for it. In the meantime, Sand King managing to pick up the Shadow Shaman, uh, fairly easy kill I guess with the puck there as well on the silent Sand King and puck. Uh, taking that on by himself, and it looks like Shadow Shaman was way out of position there by himself. Maybe looking to place his wards near the top tower. Uh, if he had, I yeah, he had them again. Uh, those wards would have uh, would have killed off the tower though. So if it was, uh, it would have been worth it if he died and placed the wards. But you know, not being able to place ward and die, not really worth it. Fortification goes off here on the top lane, where we have the Enigma that just bought a blink dagger, um, defending it, makes some uh, idlons. Still, the tower getting pressured some. By way to sexy as well as by snaking. And in the middle lane we have some pressure being applied as well, so uh, Titan Time and Fog are going to try to go for the bear, because the bear has the relic right now, there he goes, bear's dead, 100 gold for Titan Time, EMP uh, going off as well, and at this time, I mean, this was actually pretty nice play, the, it was uh, bottom bottom forcing the Tinker to defend either one of the towers, of course, if there were more people to defend, but both towers took quite a bit of damage, and next time something like this happens, the tower will go down. And that is something. I mean, they need a tower. They need a gold. They need it up on their supports to uh, to get those main items up on them, to get those starter items up on them, like the mechanism and stuff like that. It's all needed. Mechanism. Talking about me mechanism. Completed up on the dark seer. Invoker in some trouble here, but it's only. Uh, well, he has uh, picks up a salve and a clarity to just be uh, be able to go back to his lane. He picked up a drums as well. I mean, really, his mobility is just so high right now. I mean, almost full wax, drums. Four staff, face boots, he is going to be such a hero that is going to be all over the map. And if we look at the lineup entirely from uh, from bottom bottom, it's not just him that's going to be all over the map. I mean, Lycanthrope is a super fast hero as well, and he will be able to do the same. He actually has 3.3k gold right now. I'm curious to see what he's going to go for. Is he going to buy off a BKB off the bat, or is he going to go for a Necronomicon level 3 off the bat? I mean, uh, either way, it is uh, builds that we have seen Lycanthropes go for before. And a BKB in this case, I mean, it would be nice, though, he would still be in the black hole. He would still get entangled by the bear as well. It's uh, it's not really ideal, but it is something that could potentially help him out a lot, trying to get those kills. Trying to get those kills to... Uh, well, to get his farm up a bit more, because he's not going to get it from towers anytime soon. Four staff up on the Tinker right now as well as the TP from Shadow Shaman goes to this middle lane where the pressure from Fog is still on. There's three heroes now here from from uh, IG. If they are not going to try to go for him, I would say that's a waste. But Fog still, you know, happily last hitting. Sand King picking up a blink there as well, so bottom bottom having some sec secure team fight for them. And Enigma as well as the Shadow Shaman just waiting for something, waiting for Fog to maybe push out again. Maybe, maybe to place their words. Uh, talking about placing words, the tier two tower, tier one tower on the top lane did drop. So that is uh, going to be something. We have a uh, rune for regeneration. Oh, they find the lichen. Shadow Shaman picks up the regen. Didn't think he really needed that, but, but just to deny it. And it looks like uh, it looks like we have bottom bottom trying to uh, to force out a team fight, just like IG. IG being on really si on a w w weird side of the map right now. They're going to try to take that tier two tower. They do do that. And it's gonna be, uh, well, Dream Call hits on two, Epicenter, Blink, there it goes one, there goes the Shadow Shaman, there goes the Venomancer as well, Darkseer gets picked off here by the Lycan, getting a double kill, and there goes the Lone Druid, that is a lot of damage coming out from Paul and Bottom, and it's only Tinker left alive here, and the only reason he is left alive is because he wasn't there. And that is just a massive team fight, and I don't think there even was a black hole, no. There was no black hole. We saw the tornado going off from Invoker, and Invoker instantly, you know, um, we, we saw Enigma blinking away from that one. So he had his blink on cooldown and couldn't jump in with the black hole. Couldn't do a single thing. Got picked off, died, 
and that was the start for Pokemon. Like I said, oh, 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 there he goes, and Jumper and Jam in the meantime as well. And Aoi is gonna just be able to get away from that one. But I, I, like I said, if they if they win a fight, they should try to get something in return. They tried to go for the tier one tower and they didn't get it. TP from Sean too fast, using the wards to uh, to defend his tower. Worth it. Getting a kill on the way out, uh, or with Sand King running on the way out and getting a gem at that. And that got picked up by the Tinker, I believe. Or maybe it got just denied. <coughs> a Sand King who had that gem, maybe because. Uh, because he wanted to make sure that uh, that there weren't any wards up, because there were a lot of wards, a lot of counter wards, so having that one up is uh, very secure for them, as uh, Rosha will be taken here by our 2000, and I think he'll be able to do that, and Nickma is standing quite close, so he might be able to blink in with a black hole, but he needs the support from his team, and here comes the Tinker as well, that support from the team is definitely there, like him picking up the ages though, they might still want to go for this, nope, nope, backing out, backing out, like him too fast, but that medallion of course may be able to take off uh, take off the armor from the Roshan. He did pick up a Necronomical level 3, so that's the item that he wants to go for. Maybe we'll see a BKB next. Who knows? He's gonna have to continue farming first. And Lone Druid, yeah, we saw it in the previous fight. We saw the Radiance already up on the bear. Fox gonna land a tornado. Boar Strike hits on both. EMP, to, or EMP going up as well. Vacuum still lands on Wager Sexy. Wager Sexy trying to get away from that one. And uh, Rockers will still fly, but everybody should be safe. IG backing off again. They don't want to be here. They don't have the wards. To uh, to push down the tower really fast, so uh, they don't you just don't want to force the issue. Put on bottom here with four heroes. It's uh, it would be too much. It would be too much indeed. And epicenter would have been ready as well with a blink dagger, which they found out that they had in the previous team fight. Let's see, the thousand gold up on the lone druid. He is uh, just happily farming here. I mean, this is the power of the lone druid. Well, not really the power of the lone druid. This is like the, the threat of the lone druid. He is just going to continue farming, and he's going to be able to go to farm fairly fast with that bear with his radiance on there. Uh, but he is just steadily growing and growing and growing and getting bigger every time. And we have got the, the Hand of Midas, we've got the boots, we've got the shield, and he's got already 1k gold. And we have some TPs to his bottom lane. Rockets will fly. We have four heroes of bottom bottom smoke top close by. Here they come. Tornado, EMP, blink in, or not, oh well, hello, Puck there, wards from the, sh sh from the Shadow Shaman there, Venomancer drops his ultimate before he dies, Tornado interrupts a black hole, goes down, and Nygma drops there, Juan is in trouble, still shackles a Lycanthrope, Burrow Strike there, but he has the Aegis, so he should be fine regardless, even if he drops, and he does drop, triple kill for the Sand King, with his epicenter, Gem drops it again, Tower goes down, and there is Zowie, trying to take down the Lycanthrope, but he won't be able to do so, Deafening Blast going through, and uh, he is gonna be... Dead, I believe. Ferrari's still here as well, though. Takes a cold snap. Fog is in trouble. Gets picked up by the lone druid's bear. By the Radiance, I guess, with the Shadow Shaman's ward helping out. I think that... I think the gem was denied by the Shadow Shaman, and it's actually gonna be Zawa that's gonna be able to stay alive there. Lycan, of course, as well. He did use the Aegis, but... Um, 3 for 3 in the end. 3 for 3. Or oh, can I call it 3 for 3? Yeah, 3 for 4. Shadow Shaman's already back up again. That's uh, why it was 3 for 3. I like uh, using his uh, wolf form to, uh, to continue his farm even faster. Gonna go for Ancients. Who needs to regen? Not he. He's just gonna go continue on his farming streak. Let's see who pick if someone picked up that gem or if it got destroyed. I think it, I think Shadow Shaman microed his, uh, his words to destroy it. Just to make sure that nobody had it there. It looks like he did indeed. And he's gonna continue. Uh, pull, he's gonna pull, pull lane to get some solid farm up on there. Maybe try to push in the end. I mean, Tito Tower here is already down. And um, this this was actually the first tower dropping. By the way, earlier the uh, first tower dropping of uh, of uh, of IG. So some solid gold for them. Uh, but they are bottom bottom is leading on the on uh, on the kill charts. Uh, just check a look at the gold Two K in favor with three towers in favor. That's really not that much. That is really not a lot, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be dangerous for IG to uh, to continue these pushes when they are not sure they have the advantage. If they continue these pushes with trying to go for five on five team fights, they have to make sure that face is not getting picked off like he did in the previous game, uh, previous team fight. Fog taking some damage, burst strike away there from uh, for way too sexy. Puck is gonna give him give his life, or is he not? Well, Puck actually, yeah, he died. Darkseid so taking the last hit. Tornado, Fate, dropping again. Like a throat, killing him off. Like he's got, just gonna run away from that one. Zowie on the chase. Tornado, EMP going off. And it's gonna be IG that's gonna be on the run once again. Trading a Puck for an Enigma. Good trade for uh, for Pot and Bottom, to be fair. And again, no Black Hole. Well, it wasn't cool enough on the previous one that he tried to do, I guess. So that is, uh, that, is that. But definitely... Uh, 
definitely a, a good fight from bottom bottom and, and a good trade too and like in getting that kill I mean he didn't die a single time just yet so I'm trying, trying to see if there's someone standing there nope nobody's standing there but uh, yeah it's Lycan who is 4 for 0 for 5. He's been on the half of the kills of Puddle Bottom so far. Has been farming while the other half was going on. And, he, and he's uh, looking for another kill again. I don't think he'll be able to get it though. Especially now that the way too sexy is locked into an entangle. So uh, he's going to just uh, continue back to farming. As he picked up a Hyperstone. He's going to go for that Assault Grass. And also with that giving that extra, extra armor to his teammates. I have a bit of a team uh, item as well uh, on that as uh, well blink dagger on Sandkin just gonna go over the items really fast Puck also picked up a blink dagger and all of that Venomancer he is gonna build towards the mechanism by the looks of it because they don't have that yet Invoker is gonna build towards the sheepstick most likely picked up an ultimate orb wants to be able to just control that lone druid a bit more lone druid who's got 2700 gold where is his bear there is his bear. Bear, oh, bear has got the gem of true sight. Wow, sorry for that. So did not get destroyed. And bear picks up a hyperstone, so he's gonna go for an assault cross on his bear as well. It's a, it, it's a confusing that you don't see the bear's item in this uh, item uh, screen. But oh well. We're gonna have a tinker. He's got a force up. He's got with a trap. We saw that he's also building towards a sheep stick. I mean that's something that you can do for us to like, and especially now that he doesn't have a BKB just yet, and he seems to not go for the BKB either. So he'll be very perceptible for that uh, sheep stick, and especially if Tinker's going to be able to pump it out every year so often with his uh, rearm there. It's going to be really deadly if he lets himself get caught out by that. In the meantime, we have a standoff in this middle lane, or semi-standoff at least. Four heroes from IG here, four heroes from uh, bottom bottom here, <coughs> looking to uh, looking to push. And there goes the board, going to get picked off. Or not? Oh, the gem is no longer on the bear. Confusing. Who got the gem? Is it going to be Darkseer that picked up the gem? Okay, so Darkseer has the gem as a mechanism. is building towards his pipe. Going to have that uh, for his team. Smoke up for IG in the meantime. Up on the high ground, they're going to be able to try it. Well, they're going to at least find Tides of Time. Tides of Time gets him out because he is so dead. Still drops his ultimate before he dies though. You know, making sure that they're not really thinking about going uh, any uh, further. Or Tornado going in, actually. Mm, do they want to go for this? I don't think so. Nope. Not without the Venomancer there from the sidelines throwing down a gale or something like that. And Nick will actually take quite some damage. Look at that. That is all the Venomancer and the Tornado. That is just so much damage. He gets an earn charge. He's going to be up very fast. So uh, yeah, Darkseer, Billens versus Pipe, Enigma, we saw him just now, he got his Blink Dagger, he is probably gonna go for a BKB after the meeting on the bottom lane, Epicenter Burst Strike being used now in a lot of trouble, like it already killed the Darkseer, once again Lone Druid as well, and here's the Black Hole, catches two, catches way too sexy, catches Owie, and they both drop, Meteor falling from the sky, two heroes dead, four heroes dead, well, three heroes dead in this bottom lane, at least the Lycan Puck and the Sand King going down here at the price of, uh, well, not that many. Price of two, just a dark sea and a lone druid. Trying to take something there, but the tower is not even damaged one bit. So not really worth it for bottom bottom. Definitely not since that was the first time the Lycan died. And that's not really uh, definitely definitely not worth worth it. Oh, it's looking slightly. Two K gold up. We already saw that he's yeah he's gonna go for a uh, for a BKB just to be able to cast those uh, those black holes without getting interrupted by for example a tornado as we have seen happening uh, so far. Shadow Shaman is also gonna build towards a BKB. It is a fairly usual build for a Shadow Shaman just to be able to uh, continue dropping his uh, crowd controls like uh, like the hex like the shackle without getting interrupted. It is just something that is uh, that is quite imp important in team fights. So just picking that one up as we see Tide the time taking his time to. Uh, to farm some ancients with his wards, solid farming from them. If nobody else is gonna pick them up, then uh, then he shall, and he does. 3.1k gold up on the tinker. Let's uh, take a look at the gold graph with that last team fight. It's gonna be IG that has 4k advantage right now. Uh, still not that much though. So experience graph was in favor of bottom bottom. That should not come as a surprise. They were able to take down last team fights. Whoa, that was the invoker that stood there, was picked up, and as you can see, there's four heroes here of IG. So it was a bit of outnumber uh, outnumbering issue. No, no real, uh, no real challenge there for for IG taking him down. Well, I guess still nice that they uh, that they manage that. No invoke that, but yeah, it's gonna be a bottom bottom at the head of the experience chart because they have been taking the last couple of kills. 
Uh, well, not not of course the last team fight, but um, they have been taking most kills and most of the later game kills, I should add. Uh, after that, uh, Lycan started to get big enough to take some kills, and uh, later game kills gives more experience. So that is why we see them slightly in advantage. He needs a top lane like and he should be continuing his farm. He still is going towards his assault grass. Just need 400 more gold and then he has it. And maybe then he won't be dying anymore. We will have a Roshan again soon too, I think. Yeah, there we go. One minute left. And uh, when uh, that Roshan is there, we will see probably a fight happening on th around this Roshan pit. A fight happening for Roshan because Lone Druid wants that Aegis too. And the bear actually checking if Roshan was there yet, but he wasn't. So uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, both teams checking out if there is going to be Roshan fairly soon. There goes the counter ward. More counter wards happening. And just a couple of seconds left before that Roshan is back. And we do see IG just not moving. They are around here. They know it's going to be up fairly soon. They don't want to They don't want to lose anything. Give him some vision up there. And there he is. There he is. And here goes uh, here goes Lycan. Well, he's going to be up there already. And I Well, actually IG. They they counter it there, but they didn't don't have any wars themselves there, so uh, did not see it. But there's the howl. They actually hear hear the howl as well, so they will know it's up right now, and they will know that this is a fight that they potentially can take with the blinking. But like and throw up, already killing up the ages, picking up the the ages, and cheese goes to the invoker and uh, fog backing out there, and it was just too slow. It was just too slow for IG to do anything against there. They they could have blinked in maybe black hole, but. With the Lycan, with that Medallion of Courage, he goes down so fast. Age is completed now, sorry, uh, Assault Crest is completed now as well. And, uh, yeah, that is, p that is bottom bottom taking their, their next, uh, their next Aegis. And the Chiefs, so the third, uh, li third Roshan going towards them as well. And it seems like they are looking to push this middle lane. Maybe trying to take their second tier one tower. Because right now, I mean, you look at the map, you see, wow, IG, uh, IG really, really in favor right now of, uh, of bottom bottom. But, uh, yeah, the Lycan can just turn everything around. That is that is why he's like and that is why he's banned a lot. And we'll find out if uh, if they actually want to go for this. No, they are backing off, knowing that probably IG would be ready for them if they force out a team fight. And of course, in the meantime, it is Tinker that is continuing uh, to continue the pressure on the other lanes as well. He's been TPing everywhere, just making sure that you know they can't take advantage of uh, of a potential push in Tinker. We'll make sure that uh, every standoff gets punished basically. And he has a sheepstick now completed as well, so he has that for the next team fight. As a smoke up from IG is there. And who is here farming on his lane now, Lone Lycan? Will his so will his Aegis already get popped off? It might be Wolf's will pressure down the tower. Oh, he's being turned to Picklet. This might be very hard for Lycan. Gets shackled as well, get entangled. Puck there, is he gonna be able to save it? I don't think so. Vacuum there. Puck actually thinking, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm not gonna be able to do that pipe up for them. And the war trap is already placed for him. No, he turns himself to Wolf. And the black hole misses! Owie! He's out! He is out! The Aegis got popped, but oh! That black hole just a slight second too slow. And now that the black hole is on cooldown, they know. Let's try to take Sama. Let's try to take the Lone Druid. But he, they won't be able to do so. Okay, well, they t they took a tower at least. That is something they got in return. But wow. What an escape from Aoi 2000. I mean, I don't know if that was skill or luck, to be fair. Great job. Great job, nonetheless. At the time, actually, has his mechanism completed now. So if there's the next team fight, well... Probably if bottom bottom wants to force out a team fight, they know that they have to do it within two minutes or so, because uh, well two and a half minutes, uh, because the black holes on cooldown and they know without the black hole, you know, they can actually have a good team fight with a perfect epicenter. Not that they can't have it otherwise, but they just have something else to watch out for. And we're gonna see if they are actually gonna do that to uh, maybe uh, force out a tower because tier one tower in the middle lane uh, dropped as well, so tower is actually starting to look more even. Still two towers in favor of IG. And uh, this uh, tier 2 tower is uh, gonna be the target for bottom bottom, but you know, Tinker there, Lone Druid Bear there, clearing off the, the the creep wave, or at least you know, harassing them a lot with that Radiance that aura, and actually forces bottom bottom all the way back, even without the black one. They're gonna TP towards the, bo the t bottom lane to maybe stop a pushing from happening. Two TPs there in total, Sand King as well as the Puck. And I mean, right now this game, this is this is looking this is looking very even still. I mean, come on. Nobody has gotten even close to uh, to having a stand up near tier three tower. Tier three tower should also still be at full HP. Maybe, maybe yeah, the full HP, full HP. See, and uh, bottom bottom. I mean, they 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 di weren't as strong as the start because of course their Lycan was still farming up, but now their Lycan is there, 
and they were able to uh, to come back just as strong as IG is in team fights with the Berserk Epicenter uh, versus a Black Hole Black Hole Vacuum. Though I have to I have to add that, even though the Vacuum wasn't used in it just now for the Black Hole, which was a bit of a shame. But uh, yeah. That is t that is a lot of TV from IG, but also bottom bottom definitely not helpless and definitely not helpless uh, as well as long as Enigma doesn't have his BKB yet. He's close to it though. He just needs one more, one uh, K gold more, and then he has it. And then you know nothing can stop him from casting his black hole, because there is actually nothing up on the dire side right now that can actually stop him. Then so that would be very dangerous for bottom bottom. And the th the trick for them right there is uh, just to not get caught out. But even even then there's the still the vacuum. Making it possible for them to uh, to do that. The blink is actually out here from the radiant team. They know that the smoke went up, so they are gonna back out of that forest right now, or at least uh, yeah. There they go. Faith TPing towards the base again, and Lone Druid running away from that as well. They don't want to be caught out. They only want to take a team fight when they say where and when and how and what. Not when bottom bottom uh, is trying to go for one, which they are. BKB upon the Sand King. So I just said that you know you want to have your Enigma being able to cast a black hole uninterrupted. Same thing goes for the Sand King, and with the BKB uh, up on him, he can do that. Check out if we see some more items. Like and throw has got a BKB now as well. He's been farming very rapidly. I mean, look at his gold for a minute. I'm actually gonna check out some more total gold earned. That is one that you wanna see. I mean, the three gold more than Lone Druid has. He is doing very good. And of course, Lone Druid has got the radiance up on his bear, which will make him farm uh, quite fast, especially since the bear is just standing here taking farm. But uh, yeah, that that like and throw is just he's not got shut down that much. I mean, we saw him dying once on the bottom lane there, but uh, right now. He is just very hard to take down, as we saw just now when when the Aegis was popped at least, and uh, the black hole missed. I mean, come on, that is just something. And while the teams are not gonna try to force a team fight, I can just check the pings for a second because I know a lot of people want to know that. So wow, oh wow, IG around 300 ping, 330, 333. And in the meantime, bottom bottom, there's two with around 100. This is a massive difference. This is a massive difference in ping. Just, uh, just pointing that out. That is a, that, that is a di disadvantage definitely for IG. And of course, they don't. Well, actually, that that Enigma, the black hole, actually on the top lane earlier too, that that didn't catch the the lone druid. That might actually be the delay that they have. That might actually cause that. And if that's the case, that would be really sad. To be fair. Well, that is, uh, yeah, not favorable for IG. But then again, they also have a lot of heroes that don't really need that. Uh, well, that just uh, been that just need to cast their spells and, you know, not really caring about too much of the of the ping. But just uh, I just uh, I wanted to check that, so that's uh, why you see that, why I showed that. Bottom, bottom, on the way to the bottom lane. Uh, sorry, and uh, <laughs> actually IG. Also going to his ball lane. All five heroes of IG are here. Enigma has his BKB ready. He wants to go for this. The blink is there. They know. Well, they know they might be there. Well, they saw them place the board, perhaps. And uh, bottom one, do you actually want to hold a stand off here? Do they want to continue being here? 1800 gold up on the up on the Lycan throw. And they're still standing here. Rockets will fly. <laughs> we'll get dodged. Yep, and they. Are, I'm not sure. If they force out the sea fight, I don't think uh, bottom bottom would be an advantage. Nope. They actually know that. They actually think that too. So they back off. Because that that was just a perfect setup for IG to take a team fight. If if bottom bottom would have forced a team fight right here. Then Enigma could just blink in and throw down a black hole, and that's just uh, something that they don't want to risk. So they're gonna continue farming, seemingly confident that they can take the late game with having uh, Lycanthrope as a carry, and maybe a semi carry in uh, in the Invoker, who has a side device as well. Let's see if I missed some other items. Two drums up on the on the dire side. Drums up on Invoker. Drums up on the puck. Two BKBs up as well. BKB completed upon the Shadow Shaman, so they will have, will have that one as well. I mean, yeah, Chinese donut. That is, 
It's uh, yeah, a smiley fun shot. Because this is kind of, I mean, there was a standoff. There was, uh, you know, nothing happening really, as in, you know, nobody initiating. Because, of course, there was some happening. But nobody seeing the clear advantage, and they don't want to go for that if they don't have a clear advantage. That's, uh, that's going to be the case. 5,106 gold up on the Tinker. Jeez. What is he going to buy? Blink Dagger? Maybe a, um, what's it called? Sheepers Guard. Wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be that bad. Wouldn't be that bad at all, actually. And, uh, uh, by the way, the, the main difference, uh, right now for, for the team fight potential from, uh, from, versus, uh, from IG versus bottom bottom is not just that vacuum. It is actually, uh, the, the BKBs, like, like I just said, the BKBs are starting to grow up on the IG side. They've got two right now, one on uh, Shadow Shaman, one on the Enigma. And there's Enigma. And that, this, the team fight from bottom bottom will suffer from that because of course the epicenter will not do damage with the BKBs on. But at the same time the BKBs up on the dire side won't be as hurtful for uh, for the Enigma black hole because you'll still get popped into a black hole if you p picked up your BKB. If you have to BKB activate it. And are we waiting for another Roshan? Yes we are. And maybe this time IG will be in time. Well. Town portal, scrolls, Squelling Blade, Iron Branches. There is a lot of gifts being given to uh, Rosha. And we might see uh, this next team fight meaning something uh, more than uh, just a tower. There's a Malefist snaking in some trouble. Burst like epicenter incoming from the... And if, wow! No BKPs! There goes the Enigma already down! He pops himself in the sensor, but there's still a gem up, so he should be safe. He should be uh, killed off. So Schwan gets picked up here as well. Stan King taking last hit. BKBs like and going through right now. Picks up the Lone Druid. It's gonna be the Darkseer and the Tinker that are gonna be on their own. There goes the Darkseer. Lone Druid is dead. Tinker has TP'd home. And that is four he three heroes down up on the side of IG. And that was purely purely because of the BKB, he's not going on in time, and then Enigma, he, I mean, he couldn't even do anything, he got picked off before his BKB went off, he is gonna be feeling really, really crappy right now, because that, he could have changed the turn that fight around if he, uh, if he had his BKB on, if he popped a black hole there, because that could have definitely be turned around by that, but, uh, no can do, Carries got picked off, Lone Druid, who actually went for Ghost Steps, which is probably one of the best items to have for the Lycan, if you're gonna be up for the Lycan, because, his damage is right click damage and you don't want to be right click damage down so you pick up a ghost scepter so you're invincible to that or you know immune to that for a while so that is at least something good but he still got picked off so fast I mean if you have a ghost scepter you're more perceptible to spells and then you have an evoker there I mean that's you know it's, it's a trade off who do you find more dangerous at the time? Fogged? Yeah, you rocket. rocket but that's Roshan uh, being taken down and actually the thing that I said is not true that that may said maybe this fight will mean some more than just a Roshan, but it actually didn't. Tinker Blink Dagger, so he does have that one. And still, <laughs> still has 4.7k gold, you know, because he can. Uh, buyback money is starting to get really important now too, by the way. Um, oh, I don't know why Sand King is this low. Uh, but yeah, buyback money up on the heroes, because if, the fi if you lose a team fight closer to your base, uh, that might be costing you so much that you that you want to have the buybacks. You just want to have the buybacks ready. And right now we see all t tier two towers being taken down on the side of uh, of bottom bottom. And IG still has all three of them, all three of theirs. And uh, we are therefore going to see some pushing power being put up on the Sand King Necronomicon. So we have two uh, love Necronomicon soon. And it's just important to note, I mean, it is a fairly solid build because all the, the, the Howl from Lycan also works on the, on the Necronomicons from the Sand King. So if everybody picks up the Necronomicons, uh, that is going to be a lot of pushing power and, a, and, and very annoying as well. I mean, imagine Tinker. The thing he does when he's counter pushing here, March of the Machines, it will kill off the, the Necronomicon Warriors, which is, of course, you know, nice to kill them off, but they actually do a lot of damage. And he has 1700 gold, so if there's going to be three people with Necronomicons, he is he is potentially, well, he's not going to die from it, but he is very close to dying from it. And that is just uh, very risky. Actually, he would probably die from 600, uh, 600 damage by taking down a level 3 uh, Necronomicon Warrior. So uh, that is just something that he has to be very careful about. 5.5k gold upon him. He's just farming so fast right now. Oh. Levels. 
Invisibility. Oh, we actually have a bit of a standoff here again. Burst like up on the bear. They want to kill off the bear. Gil going to hit as well. There's the blink in. The Ferrari's going to stop the vacuum there as well. Is it going to be a black hole there? It is going to be a black hole. Catches too. Owie there. Snaking there. Snaking. Already down. He is down to the darks. He is. Owie is going to be locked into a shackle and will drop here. But he has the ages. So he should be fine. Or is he not? No, he's not. He had the cheese. He did not use the cheese. Did not get the chance to use the cheese. Sandy coming in there with a burst like though. Killing off the... Killing on the Shadow Shaman. Darkseer going down to the puck who balled back. Sandkin going down to the Lone Druid who is on the chase for the puck again. Here comes Faith again. Lands him out of it's up on Snaking. Fog there. Gonna try to do some damage. Puck still alive. Should be fine. Tornado drops the bear into the air. And uh, so far Nick might still gets picked up by the Invoker. That is nice for them. But oh, there goes the Aegis. It was actually not up. It was actually up on the Invoker and not on the on the, uh, on the Lycan. And uh, I guess they are quite... Uh, Sad about that right now. Fog is going to be going down here for the second time. There we go. Lone Druid making sure that it happens. And that's 4 for 3. And 4 for 3 with buybacks. I mean, if we check out uh, this one, there was a buyback from the puck up on the dire side. And he is actually the only one staying alive. So in theory, it was a 3 for 5 team wipe. And this will give Lone Druid the chance to force this tower. And force out some buybacks. Uh, Ferrari is actually going to throw it on the March of the Machines just to, be, to let them uh, be able to, uh, to take some more harassment to not have it to chase uh, that easy. But he should be fine, and there he goes. Did he pick up something new? No, he did not. 6.4k gold. Jeez. And that is uh, that was the first tier 3 tower getting damaged. And it was a tier 3 tower from bottom bottom. So that is uh, painful. That is painful for bottom bottom. And they, they, they did really get caught out. I mean, that was a good black hole. And even though it caught only two, there was nobody that could interrupt him. And it got the, it got the lichen. It got the lichen. Lycan, who uh, apparently did not have a buyback, so that is something just uh, to note. Lycan, who picked up a sacred relic, so is potentially going for, well, what is he going to go for? Yeah, Abyssal Blade, most likely. Basher. Just to ha he's already attacking super fast, just to have those stuns, just to have those bashes. And he still has the cheese, he was not able to use it just now. And Tinker. Did he buy something? He bought some. He bought something. He doesn't have any inventory yet, though. Oh, there you go. Link is fear up on the tinker. So he uh, he picked up that one. Able to stop uh, some uh, some target spells from going off, like for example, Boro Strike. But that's it. He will still get hit by the Gale. Still get hit by the epicenter. Cold snap, though. Important. Cold snap. We'll take it off. And he has been quite of a cold snap target so far, to be fair. BKB off cooldown again, 22 seconds until the black hole. Let's see if they're going to try to uh, do the same thing again. I mean, it was a fight forced out by uh, IG. Picking up bottom bottom, who we're not expecting a fight at that time. BKB up on the invoker. Yeah, it doesn't have my buyback money now anymore either, by the way. 1600 gold up on the puck. Let's see, where's buyback money? Not that many. And actually, Invoker, he bought back earlier, so... He, uh... He uh, doesn't even need to buy back just now. He can't. If he, even if he had the money, he can't. He has to farm in the meantime. Oh, Tinker. Thinking about TPing to his bear to take care of Tide of Time, but nope. Saw the rest incoming. Changed his mind. Changed his mind indeed. Tink, uh, uh, Venomancer is also looking to go for BKB, perhaps. Picked up an Ogre Club. Might be a good item for him to have. Darkseer, f just farming. I mean, wh what else can you do, really? Wow, I just said a, a Basher gonna be up for Lycan uh, in time. Uh, but actually, he's gonna Basher first, Lone Druid. Gonna have a bear with a bash Basher, bear who's gonna have about the same items as uh, as the Lone Druid, actually. Apart from the BKB being the difference with the Radiance. And there's Lycan also picking up a Skull Basher, so he will have his Abyssal Blade. There we go. Nice word up here by the Radiant, making sure that they know exactly where the heroes are from bottom bottom. If they're gonna go for Roshan again, that is. Which is not yet. And they might actually want to wait for the next fight until after Roshan. Just in case. They could. And I, may, may I remind you people, this is game number one. Oh, Snaking. It's turned to a piglet. Gets a uh, rocket. Uh, should be able to link away afterwards. Yeah. There it goes. Ooh, blink after that though, and there's a vacuum, another rocket. Pick that four stuff forward, and he is still safe. Definitely blast going through, and Puck uh, able to get away from that one. That's why he's an escape artist. 
And there goes Ferrari back with his uh, tinker. Still a couple of minutes left. Two, three minutes. Two and a half. Something like that. In the meantime, pressure from uh, from the creeps on this bottom lane, so it will be uh, Tinker that has a TP there soon, even though he TP's to the top first by the looks of it. No, changed his mind. Okay. Going towards bottom uh, first. There he goes. And that's just what they can do with a the Tinker there. They can continuously keep the pressure on, continuously make sure that all lanes are pushed out towards bottom bottom. We're putting up a hell of a fight, by the way. There's the bear. The school bash. It's a very powerful bear. 2200 gold already up on the lone druid as well. And there's no words there for the dire side, only for the radiant side. I mean, if we, if we would check out the vision that the dire side have, look, it's barely anything. I mean, they can see into the radiant jungle, but right now it's it's barely anything. And if you compare that to the radiant, they have vision almost all over the map, apart from in their own jungle. But you know, they're not there anyway. So. uh Pretty good uh, map control by IG as they're now gonna stand here for a minute and wait till nah. It's gonna be Tinker backing off. They know that Rochelle is back up soon though. They're waiting for it. That's the thing that could cause a team fight. I mean, if the last couple of Roshans, all every Roshan still went to bottom bottom and in the team fights there as well. But if that gets changed around, then uh, then all of a sudden it's gonna be dire. Not uh, the dire. The Roshan has a dire advantage. No, then the Dyer has disadvantage for being near Roshan because if that fight happens and is being taken by IG and the lanes are still pushed out by the Tinker, making sure that, that you know, if they win a team fight they instantly can go on a tier three tower. That may end very badly for bottom bottom. We're gonna see though. We are gonna see Roshan a minute away. Barrel's gonna check it out. Got a Lycan Wolf there as well, they're standing invisible. He's gonna slowly die, there we go. He's still at the gem of true side uh, close by from the from the dark sea. Another wolf being being brought there. Nice job. And Tinker is just pushing, pushing. He's already got 5.3k gold again. I mean, really. Gonna have to kill him off twice at least, and we need to kill him off. Because he'll buy back, and he'll be in the fight back uh, faster than you can say Tinker. Or you, you can say V arm. Even better. Invoker, yeah, it's got buyback money now as well again. Still, uh, still, it's still a dance about Rosha really, and he is back up again. So he'll, uh, oh she, sorry, we decided it was a she. Rosha back up again. She will try to defend her life with all her might. She won't be able to do that though. Smoke up for bottom bottom. I am not sure where they're gonna try to find out. I mean, they see, they see this, uh, this middle lane. They can only guess that the rest of there with them waiting for a team fight. Here they go. Nope. Nope. Staying. Like and actually joining the team? Yeah. They have to. You want you don't want to trade Rosha for a tier three tower, that's not worth it. Oh, they actually want to go in on this. There we go, epicenter being casted and actually gets interrupted by that one and there we go we have got three way too sexy being locked in place has a BKB on but will probably still die there as well as a lone druid actually getting picked up by the Lycan and that's two people already dead buying back Enigma dead as well in the meantime and buy back as well Shadow Shaman buys back as well I should have this one on in the meantime there it goes Darkseer drops his gem in the meantime will get picked up and that was a lot of buybacks and that was two down four so well, you know, it was uh, it was actually four down for uh, for IG. They had got the lone druid dying. They had got the shadow shaman dying. They both dwelt back. And Nigma and Darkseer dying as well. A great fight for uh, for bottom bottom. Even though their black hole, sorry, their 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 epicenter got interrupted, and uh, Nigma still uh, popped his BKB and stuff, but uh, wasn't able to throw it on a black hole. Not a proper one anyway. Tornado EMP at the time getting dropped and drops two gems with that. Wow, he had two. Bear takes one. Bear takes one and destroys one. And we have Stankin being turned too big, like being entangled, taking a lot of damage, pops his cheese, just to be safe. And there we go, the fight goes on, snaking blinks in, silence there as well. 
Nice ice wolf making sure everybody is slow. Lone Druid super slow there right now. Pops up the pipe for the Radiant team. Schwan taking a lot of damage from Aoi, but Aoi being turned to a pickle and his gun actually dropped there, but already picked up the Aegis in the meantime. So we'll be back up against Sand King. Will get dropped here. Already used his cheese and is gonna be picked up by the Tinker. And the rest should be on the run out now. With maybe the bear will still get picked up. Because this fight is looking the, uh, the other way. I mean, the fight earlier was won by, by Pot and Bottom and they took the Roshan. But with the buybacks from IG, they were able to take down the next fight, making sure that they didn't lose a single hero there. They picked up the puck, they picked up the, sa the Sand King, they picked up the Aegis as well as the Cheese, and Sand King already bought back, so he is not going to be able to be there in the next fight, even though he had the epicenter again. And Puck, I mean, Puck doesn't have the money to buy back. This is just not there. Invoker is already back up again. He'll be here. But the tier 3 tower, there's the board, there's Ferrari as well. Martin Machine is definitely about to go through. He did pick up a Shiva's guard in the end. Still got 3.6k hold, just because he can. And Wars being destroyed as fast as they can. And uh, TPR from Tinker. Gonna get some more mana, and we'll be back later. Uh, for uh, for this teaching, I mean, everybody of IG just standing here. The tower just slowly dropping. That's the power of the Lone Druid, and there they go. They kill off the, t the tier 3 tower. Vacuum there. Venomancer is in trouble there. But let's just ulti off before he goes back to the base. He doesn't get picked up just yet because they want to go for the, the barracks just first. And uh, they are able to do that. Mechanism goes off to make sure IG can stand here, continuously stand here. Sunstrike killing off some of the creeps. There goes the melee barracks. And IG, are they going to stay or are they going to go? Should they stay or should I go now? No, they're gonna go. They're gonna go. They've had enough. It's too risky. Lycan would be able to maybe kill off someone. Jump in there with his BKB. It's off cooldown again. But they lost their they had lost their barracks. That was a very pricey Roshan. That was a very pricey Roshan because that all came from the Roshan fight. First the fight won by Pot and Bottom, then Pot and Bottom thinking, hey, you know what, we can do Roshan because, you know, we killed them off, we won that team fight. But no, too much buyback, too many buybacks rather. And IG able to take down the fight that followed on top of that one. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, looking shiny right now as they took down the, f the first set of barracks because of it. There we go, Tinker. Again, yeah, I mean, the Chief's Guard is a nice item to have for Tinker. I mean, you can just... You know, re-army, use, use everything over again. Usable items are great. Even though for for the Tinker players, it's going to be either really fun if you're really good at it, or really annoying because all the buttons. In the meantime, let's see if we got some new items. Well, actually, I don't think we should see some new items. We ha actually have a sheep stick up on the puck, but he has got no buyback money either. Uh, he doesn't have the cooldown anymore. Uh, we've got the Venomancer picked up a sun. She doesn't have buyback money. We've got the Invoker, has got buyback money, he's got 4.6k gold. He could actually buy something and still have buyback money left. Uh, but what would he buy? I am not sure. As uh, we will either find out or not if he's not going to buy anything. Uh, we've got the Lycan, he has the buyback money, he has got the items. Maybe maybe uh, Invoker should also buy a Necronomicon. It wouldn't be such a bad idea. A Necronomicon level 3 also upon the Sand King. Uh, so that, that, and this guy, this Lycan, uh, would be able to. Uh, yeah, to cause a lot of uh, steer during team fights, but he has to actually uh, be alive to do that, and you know, not be uh, too scared to go in. Well, probably just uh, just now he was uh, probably rightfully scared, I guess. As IG is just keeping the pressure on and uh, making sure that the next team fight. I mean, they all carefully prepared as well. They might uh, they they will want to have all their buy box ready, at which they are right now. Oh, actually, are they? Uh, no, we they want to have all their buy box ready, so they we have to wait like for a minute or so less. It's gonna be really dark here. That is that, and they want to have uh, they want to have everything ready. All their ultimates, all their BKBs, all the lanes pushed out. They have to have that perfect situation, and maybe even they want to wait until Roshan. That could be. Maybe they want to want to go for Roshan. We'll find out though. I can't believe that the, the Venom has actually dropped two gems there in that fight. And uh, yeah, one got destroyed. The other one picked up by the Lone Druid, who has the space there. He's got 5k gold as well. Maybe you should buy some upgraded boots for the for the spirit bear. Could work. Could work. And in this time of uh, oh, never mind. In this time of smoke, we see bottom bottom smoking up, looking for kills. Not gonna be able to find any just here though. Everybody of uh, of IG. I mean, they know they got heroes missing on the map. There's no defense here for this uh, lane nail there. Now there is. That's the, that's the downside of having uh, of having barracks down. 
and no tower anymore. They they can leave the base just fine, but they have to make sure that they're not gone too long before the lanes start pushing in. In the meantime, we have a trouble for uh, Ferrari on his bottom lane. He's being dropped into a dream call, gets uh, into a piglet as well, gets right clicked. BKB up and invoker just because he can. Deafening Blast will end the job, and Fog taking the kill. And Tinker, oh come on, he has got the gold, so you know it won't hurt him that much. He'll actually have the buyback on cooldown now, so that is in advantage of him, but. It's only five minutes, and is there going to be another fight in five minutes? If IG can have any say about it, apparently, no, there's not going to be a, five, a fight in five minutes. So if you're only here for the team fights, you know, get yourself a drink and uh, come back in five minutes to make sure that you're here for that. And actually, I, I'm going to uh, drink some water because uh, this game is lasting a very long time. So, uh, two seconds. Hey, a new item. Oops. Shadow Shaman picking up a blink dagger. More initiation for IG. And he's also picked up a point booster, so maybe he wants to go for an agony in the long run. But he is actually with that blink dagger. He went all in. Doesn't have buyback money anymore. And I'm not sure which uh, which of the of the thing you want to see, which of the gold things, current gold maybe. I mean, as you can see, three heroes have buyback right now. Off on the radiant side. Ah. Nice sun strike. And IG, no man being left alone. Everybody uh, roaming together right now. I mean, that is what they should do too, right? I mean, if they get picked off, if they are alone, they might get picked off, and in that case, you know, that might give the advantage for bottom bottom to go in on that. And that's why we see bottom bottom staying close together as well. They're not gonna leave anybody behind. Well, not um, intentionally anyway. And I gotta make sure that everybody, uh, everybody stays together. And they're gonna try to find to kill someone, but they won't find anything but a bear who gets uh, ported back. And we'll actually want to push if if they show themselves now, it will mean that they already realize that they want to push. And uh, in that case, there will be defense for that as well. There's the TP's in. Tinker gonna TP to the top lane to uh, help this pushing from happening. Uh, but the TP's from uh, Aoi as well, so snaking to the top lane to defend it. And here comes the rest as well. Will they be able to pick off the Tinker again? Nope. And there's a push in the middle lane in the meantime as well. Fog's gonna get him out of his. He might get, fo get picked up. Actually, Puffer's BKB has to run away from this one. It's got full backs on. He has picked up a Daedalus. He has no buyback money up on him. And the uh, last tornado should be fine. And IG backing out again. But yeah, he, he picked up a Daedalus, so no buyback money for him anymore. And BKB now on cooldown, and he only has 6 seconds BKBs left. And that might be small things, but it's actually very annoying for uh, well, for the BKB hero. As we see that Enigma still has 8 seconds left. Let's see the like it. 8 seconds left. 6 seconds left upon a Shadow Shaman. That is it, right? This is all the BKBs. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Seven seconds left on the sand team. Wow, I almost forgot about that one. But yeah, this game. We saw Snake and saying it earlier. Chinese don't have. I mean, it is a Chinese team, and I'm not sure if it's entirely coming from IG. But right now, bottom bottom can't really push in because they don't feel like they have the strong advantage, which is true. And for bottom bottom, the the trick is to wait for IG to make a mistake. But that is why it's Chinese Dota. IG is going to be so careful that they're not going to make any mistakes, or at least that's their goal. So, we'll be able to, <laughs> to see uh, uh, the next Roshan fight, most likely. Next Roshan fight will mean something, and he's uh, almost back up again. One minute. Because last Roshan fight also meant a uh, tier 3 tower on the barracks. So this Roshan fight might be uh, ending the same. They don't have any wards up there. It is not really useful to have wards up there, because of course they have got the... The the gems, multiple. Well, gem, I guess. No, he, uh, he pops BKB. Wow. Wow. A bit premature, but, you know, rather that than getting picked off, I guess. But it might be IG just ba being back. If they, wanna, if they, if they wouldn't want to fight without Xuan with his BKB, they will back off now waiting for his... Oh. Okay, so this might change something around. <laughs> And he's going all in with that as well. He doesn't have a buyback. He has a divine rapier. Wow. He has a divine rapier. 
So, they, he will want to fight now. Oh, sorry. Wow, Evoker means I'm killing off the Shadow Shaman. Well, I know he didn't have his BKB, so he wasn't able to get out. Lycan, gonna take Roshan as a punishment. We'll have uh, its Aegis as well, if he sells the Morbid Mask. Sells it. Aegis. So that is something. So we have two Lycans, as in a two, yeah, two, yeah, they have to kill him off twice. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And if they do that, they get an Aegis. Oh, uh, sorry, Divine Rapier. Yeah. So, are we thinking, you know what? This game has lasted long enough. I am gonna buy a Rapier. I am gonna make sure that, you know, next fight, whether we win or lose, it's gonna probably be the last fight. So, uh, there we go. There we have it. I, I don't think IG has any clue just yet. I mean, of course they know that uh, that uh, Roshan was dropped. They, they saw the message. They know that Lycan picked it up. Good choice also. I mean, they picked him off the last time and wasn't able to use his cheese. And uh, IG backing off again. I like it. I'm looking for kills. They just want to have that. They just want to have that, that, that fight. But IG being so careful. They can't really do that. I'm having cor current gold open so you can see who has buybacks. The top four have buybacks right now. <laughs> what? They're on level three. Okay. More burst damage. From Ferrari. Level five. No, level three. Oh, look bigger than I thought. And of course, what did I say about rearm? It refreshes all the items. <laughs> Including the Dagon, so you can Dagon, rearm, Dagon, rearm, and that's a lot of damage 600 burst damage every time. But yeah, uh, for the people so asking, uh, this is the US West server, and we've already seen that IG actually has a ping from around 300 versus uh, bottom bottom, which is around uh, one, 130 ping, with even, uh, even one or two at, uh, sitting around 100 ping. Illusion. So, uh, yeah. Someone turned into a piglet. Oh no! It was an illusion. Sun strike. Pig piglet. Well, again, here comes uh, someone. Whoa! <laughs> I really thought it was someone, but no. Oh, here they go. No, here they not go. Here they don't go. <laughs> Oh, uh, this game, I mean, really. I like, I like the, I like the, 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 the Divine Rape here. I, I really do. And otherwise, this game would probably go on for another, another 20 minutes or so. But, I mean, you pick that Rape here and, and you think, Wow, something awesome is gonna happen. There's gonna be an awesome team fight incoming. But then, you know, nothing happens. So there's a Rape here in the game. Who cares? Nobody cares, apparently. Not IG, anyway. And they just continue farming the way they have been. And at the same time, I mean, we still don't see that much buyback money up on the heroes. Lycan is now 1700 gold. I mean, he is uh, still happily farming. Maybe he gets buyback money, but if he gets buyback money, he still uh, has, lost his, uh, has lost his divine rape here. And by then, it's probably too late. I mean, if Bottom Bottom loses a team fight now, it will probably be too late. So I can get a TP out, what are the current levels? Not everybody's level 25 yet. We actually see uh, Nickman being the lowest level, level 17. That's why he's been dying so much. Have his Helbert picked up by the uh, by the Venomats. If you can use it on the bear, I think you can. It would be a very good thing to have. And there's level 5 Dagon. Up on the Tinker. Just because he can. Nice. So that's an item that Puddle Bottom hasn't seen yet. And I'm I'm a bit worried for the last team fight. I I'm 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 already thinking about it in terms of the last team fight. Because I'm afraid that it will be over it it will be over like super soon. As in as soon as the team fight starts, which we have been building up now for like for for a while. We have been building up for a team fight. Teams have been building up for a team fight. And I would be disappointed if it was just, you know a bit of a meh team fight. I want an epic team fight. Come on, give it. <laughs> I mean, they still have all the tier three towers. So if if bottom bottom wins a team fight, 
is not over yet. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of Modern Warfare 2 fight. It's actually not gonna, probably not going to be the last team fight. Depending on the... No, definitely not. There's going to be too many buybacks from Pot and Bottom. But... Uh, sorry, from uh, from IG. But still... Well, I'm not sure. We will find out. We will find out. No team fight just yet. They're just dancing around each other. Hoping to get buyback money. This is just, uh, I mean... What else can we talk about right now? <laughs> Until we see something happening. What else? So it's a nice day here in the Netherlands. It's a bit hot, but it's not really sunny, so it's the kind of, it's, it's very high humidity and stuff. I've been for And um hmm. I actually slept quite okay. It was nice. Oh, and my uh, my uh, the games from yesterday from the from the Pro Dota 2 non pro playoffs grand finals are on YouTube. You can check those out. Not now, because you know we are in a fight. Don't do that yet. Uh, my YouTube is shevergaming.com. No, Shiver Gaming. And if you want to find my website, that's shevergaming.com. But you know, you probably already knew that. So uh, yeah, in the meantime, nothing really changed in uh, in this fight. Nothing really changed in the heroes. I mean, like can really count by anything else. Maybe he wants to go for another for another divine rape here. I mean, if you really want to go all in, then yeah. Then you can't do that, but... Yeah. <laughs> you know. So far, no. 4.4 can go up on the tinker. Shadow Shaman's not really farming. I mean, it's still the same heroes that are farming the whole time. Not leaving a lot for the rest. Did they think to find someone? Or are they hoping to find someone? I think so. I can show up on the bear. Jeez. Okay, so Bear got a Monkey King bar. <laughs> he can kill Ancients in one hit. Oh, that's just so annoying. Hey, and Darkseer actually getting the money from this. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? That was actually, uh, that was actually Zara thinking, hey, I'm not getting money from the Creep Wave. Let's move the Bear a bit further away so it's only the Radiance hitting them, not the Iron Shell anymore. Nice. So, who had Daedalus as well? Just, you know, he is super tanky. Let's see, uh, 4.3k gold up on the Invoker, with, yeah, with the Daedalus there as well. It's just... Uh, it's just a Lycan. I think I've, I've, I've gone over everybody again. Let's start from scratch. Double damage up on the Loon Druid. Well, I don't think he's gonna do anything with it, to be fair. I mean, if um, if you count like super, 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 super late game, like later than this, then it's gonna be um, the lone druid that has got 12 item slots. Just to say that, that's um, that's a lot of item slots. That's a lot of items. That's a lot of farm needed to uh, to take that. So he might uh, just want to fill his own item, his own inventory up with uh, this set of items as well. Maybe, maybe not with an assault cuirass, but just maybe a Delta still, or his own his own abyssal blade. Is the Roshan back up again soon? It seems like it. Side the vice upon the Sand King, just because he can. Goes all in though. Doesn't have money anymore left. He can't buy back. They're really going all in upon the bottom bottom. They've had enough. They've had enough. Deep from 4k go up on the puck. I mean, if um, if Roshan responds, then the rape you're all like and will disappear. So then, then if you only have to kill him off once rather than twice, if you want to take his rape here. 
Oh, hey, hello! Crash here! Venom has the ulti going through, snaking, already in a lot of trouble. Black hole being used, catches four heroes from Pot on bottom, but in the meantime, BKB's all over the place. He's gonna get ti Tinker and Puck already died, both mode back as well, time to time. Gonna do what he can, but he'll probably die, dropping his gem of true side. Rocket's flying too, there goes way too sexy, drops there as well. Schwan, will he die on the sidelines so far? No, still five heroes again alive. From IG, there goes the Lycan, getting killed off. Will he die again? Snaking gonna try to save him. Lycan with, yeah, oh wow. Vacuum there. Owie 2000, gonna drop. Five heroes down. Drops the Rapier. Rapier up on the lone druid. And that's a triple kill for Darkseid. Buybacks, but the GG will play it is through. GG will play this call. It's gonna be Paul and Bottle that calls the GG for IG. IG, they got a good black hole in there. They got a good team fight going. And that team fight just, you know. Not even waiting for the last Roshan, it was just this game. I mean, really, yes, Rapier. Fog comes trying to do what he can. It was just bottom bottom getting caught out, I guess. I mean, they were not expecting to be forced on a team fight, even though they were the ones with the smoke up. But GG being called, so, you know, it's going to be IG that takes game number one. Yes, that's true, because we are having a best out of three before between these uh, two games, uh, two teams, sorry. And this is a game, or this was a game for Pro Dota 2, non Pro. Oh, or sorry, for Pro Dota 2 playoffs, not non-pro. I've been saying that a lot over the last couple of days. So Pro Dota 2 playoffs, and uh, GG go next, being called from the admin, and we are going to see the throne explode. I'm going to show you the end screen for just a second before I'm going to jump into the second game, and uh, we will find out which one of these teams is going to go on to the winner's bracket for all the best out of three games, or which one is going to go to the lower bracket for the best out of one games. And here we go, please. I actually have to disconnect right now, sorry.